This is the better half of Team Nelson. Unquestionably Nelson. the better half. Core right. Nelson! Go Nelson! Alright. You know, it's time to put out a proper video when you're getting text messages from uh, Jeff and Cheryl and a bunch of other folks saying, hey man, everything okay? I know it's been a while in my last video, I just kind of put a series of quick ones out that I was filming with my phone when my dirt bike uh, broke down. Got it back to camp, you saw that part. Since then, I've been doing some solar installs for some folks that uh, met up with me out here in the desert. And that's really been what's taken most of my time. I did order a bunch of parts for the motorcycle to get it back in shape. I'll just give you a quick look. The after picture. New front tire. New back tire. Oops. New back tire. Rebuilt the entire rear end. I still need to get down to get a, I'm gonna get a new plate because I might get a ticket for that uh, number two being kind of messed up. Plus I'm expired, but I put this on so I could have a mock-up of where to put the uh, license plate lights. And I put a brand new, this is both a tail light, uh, turn signals, and a uh, brake light. Put that on, new, new fender, new spark plug is in there. That other one was really bad fouled. And I put a new carburetor on. I put a Makuni uh, T36 pumper carburetor on thinking, I, I knew I had problems and I had rebuilt that carburetor in the past, but it was always kind of leaking fuel out of one of the uh, drain lines. Even if I checked the float needle, it still did it. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna spring for a new carburetor and wow, does this thing run like a new bike now. I didn't think it would have that much of a difference on it, but totally new bike, thrilled about it. While I still have a couple of more solar installs to do before we head out of here, I met up with Nelson and his band of schoolies. Some of them weren't schoolies and hung out with those guys. What a great crowd. We're going to catch up and go visit Nelson right now. He shared some veneer wood with me that's going to be absolutely beautiful to uh, put on some of the shelves of my bus. And I also ran into Kelsey of Kelsey and Shane Love Hut for Life. And she asked me these six questions that she seems to ask. She's got this thing where she asked the same questions of nomads and I gave her my answers if you want to see what those answers were head on over to love hut for life on YouTube I'll put a link in the notes and check that out they seem to have a pretty good thing going down there I think you might like their channel and in the meantime let's take a look at Nelson and uh, his family down there and meet those guys let's go do it I'm here with Nelson and his son and his girl and they are getting ready to wrap up camping in Havasu and head on to adventures elsewhere. And so I ran down here, it's kind of windy. I do have my uh, wind sock on. We'll see if that has an improvement on the wind situation. But with that, I present to you Nelson and let's take a look at his rig. What is happening? Hey guys. So Nelson. All right, so we came out here, uh, I think February 12th and started this build from scratch. It was a yellow bus. Uh, with nothing in it, just steel floors, no seats, nothing, no insulation, nothing at all, just from scratch. And with just a bunch of friends, like it started, this idea just started on like February 5th-ish at Schoolie Palooza. And I started putting the word out and meeting friends and just a bunch of strangers started following strangers. And before we knew it, we were up Craggy Wash with I think as many as like 35, 40 buses and vans. Everybody at different levels of building or just being up there to hang out and help or just hang out period and just commune with people and so it's been a super dope experience uh but we've got literally the whole thing is uh i mean we got we got it all painted although there's plenty of touch-up painting that i need to do still but we mixed up a custom color chopa cooled the top uh yeah forgive the mess but again this is move day in the middle of a build um, and this is Genevieve. Genevieve. Hey. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> We've mounted all of our solar. There was nothing done on this bus when we pulled it in here on February 12th-ish or something like that. Okay, so yeah, my buddy um, John with the West Valia, the Cinco West Valia, man. He's, I've known him from up in Oregon, but man, this guy did amazing stuff helping with this killer solar system. 
Looking good. Yeah, man. It's Got a yourself a nice uh, inverter. Should do the trick. A very yep. robust solar controller. You're not going to have any problems with that. No. We went with Victron because Jamie, as well as about six other people, were loving the Victron thing. So. Yeah, I think you're going to really like it. Yeah. Well, we got 400 amp hours of lithium uh, in these two batteries that only weigh 90 pounds, dude. It's so light. Mm -hmm. Like, nah, yeah, 400 amp hours for 90 pounds. That's incredible to me. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. And how many watts are you working with on the roof? Uh, what are we at? 1240? Oh, wow. You're yeah. So three, yeah, three, 310 watt. And we get those out of Santan. They're a really good company, like a super legit company. They, one of their, one of the Victron components was the, um, Basically, the software on it was was malfunctioning, and they fronted me the second one until I can come back through town and return the original one. It's like an eight hundred dollar unit. So if you go to Santan, man, those guys are actually really good. Period. Good here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we found it with all these stock aluminum shelves, which I love, dude. We put in our lighting. Uh, John and Nico helped me out big with that. Um, this is my main man, Shay Camp. One of my closest friends on the road and an incredible builder who's been helping every yep. step of the way. He's got a lot of time in Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brent was the well, guy who put, put in this right. floor from scratch, dude. Brent and me, like, but mostly Brent. Brent kicked ass on this floor. Uh, got all this floor in for us. Scored this for my friend Bethany and we dropped a sink into it. So we got a killer sink going on, which we love plumbed out and ready to go. Some kind of an old buffet from the Goodwill, I'm sure. Copper sink? Yeah. Which that water's sitting in there to just hold down. We just sealed it up so it's like in there for weight. Gotcha. Yep. And then we got our kitchen set up. I bought this from a fellow nomad out at Schooly Palooza that I know from the Wolf Gang uh, Wolf Pack Roundup up in Oregon. A shout out to him for selling me that rad thing. Yeah, I've never nice. seen anything that had like LED lights. On yeah, there. right. I know, I know. That's pretty cool. It's actually cooking yeah. right now. Oh, is that why the lights are lit up? Oh, yeah, it's telling now. you the stuff's what? happening. What are we, we having? The ground, the ground beef leftover from Dope. last night. From the Hobo fire last night. From the Hobo, the Hobo Yeah, that was a fun time. Yeah. And then we got our. What's this guy? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Sounds like all the modern. Oh, and this guy back here, by the way. We passed right by him. He's probably the most important fixture in our entire rig. Mr. Cole Nelson. <laughs> hey, buddy. You say hi? Mm. You say hi, dude. <laughs> hey! Yep, this guy's been running with me for 26 years. My right part on. partner in crime of 26 years. My main man, Mr. Coley Boy. No. Oh, yeah. Help you keep it together. Yeah, he does. He keeps me in line. Somewhat. <laughs> okay. And this is Coley Boy's cabin. And it's not finished yet, but all the walls are, you know, the walls are in and stuff, but we still have a lot of finished work to do in here. Okay, let me see. Yeah. Looking good. He's going to have a little TV in here. Yeah. Got the windows. Yeah. He can control his own uh, ventilation. He's got a nice light. Right. And then the pantry unfinished, but it will get there. We got our closet here for all our clothing. And then in the wall, we just built the step system in so we can climb right up to the deck up here. Oh, nice. Which the deck will be put on this month. So, and I'm super excited about that. And then in here is the shower and our composting toilet. That The tea diversion, the urine diverter runs down to a tank underneath the bus. You know? Yeah. And it's not finished, but it is getting there. Yeah, this whole thing looks like a great you know, work in project yeah, progress, dude. but it looks like <laughs> it's a great, it's going to be amazing. And mind you, all this has been done in only five weeks. Wow. I know. So this was a complete shell. Complete shell. Complete. Wow. Yeah, this was literally just uh, just steel floored. Not, you know, the. luckily the seats were, the seats were taken out before I, well, when I bought it. Uh, the seats and the rubber floor were all so it was just steel floor. We had to get some of the rust off, patch it up. Yeah, but it was just a steel shell, nothing, nothing done whatsoever. And then this stuff, like the way Shane built this thing, it could hold a gorilla. Right on. Yeah, I'm in, I'm really digging it. And then we have a behind you, of course, is the master bedroom. 
and uh, we haven't done curtains or anything, so you know, of course, there's work in progress. Sure. Water heater's going up today. Plumbing what are you going to use for a water heater? Looks like you got the PEX going. Yeah, we got this thing. It's the Eco. Um, what's it called? It's the. Uh, it's a big one. It's, I forget the name of it, man. Eco something. Uh, Eco temp. Eco temp. And this Long propane. Demand. Yep, propane, and then it'll vent right up here through the roof. Got you a little cutout for your. Yeah, we just did that yesterday, and then we're finishing it up this morning. It looks great, man. I yeah. Think you, you, you're coming along, and this is going to be uh, a great example and, and a nice home to live in. We went from a 31 foot motorhome into this, but seamlessly. I would never have been able to get this done by myself, um, and especially not in the time frame we did it. Like in five weeks here, it went from a shell to almost a fully livable house. Now it's just time for finish work. And, uh, and like, right, without help from my nomadic friends, uh, dude, there's no way I could have gotten this done. I don't have the level of expertise uh, in just the amount of sure work that went into it. Even painting the whole outside, it was a really cool thing. There was a community, there must have been 10 of us out here painting it at one time. We just did it in like two days. And this is Kelsey. How's it going? Hi. My best friends from Love Hut for Life, dude. Kelsey. This is the better half of Shane and Kelsey, so. Of Shane and Kelsey. Yeah. Of the Love Hut for Life team. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is the better half of this is the better half of Team Nelson. Unquestionably Nelson. the better half. Call All Nelson. Right. Call Nelson. All right. Great build. You're well on your way. I appreciate the the wood veneer you're gonna give yeah, me. Yeah, of course. You everything's are. everything's groovy. Who are you, man? Who's Nelson? What's going on with you? How did you decide to live a life on the road? What did you used to do before? What was your inspiration for buying a school bus instead of staying in your RV? Tell me about it. Uh, um, so I was a professional artist, and my little dude here had a, a massive stroke. He lost his carotid artery on the right-hand side, right right about right here. And uh, it wasn't due to any health issues. It was just a, a rare so, thing where in the, the lining of the artery, there was a, a tear in it. I caught the other side one morning and cut off all blood circulation on the right-hand side of his brain, which was a major game-changer. I mean, he, he uh, all the other like, difficulties he's had in life were not big game-changers. This was a game-changer. After a couple of years uh, of medical struggles, uh, it became clear that he was going to need full-time care beyond just what a normal dude with Down syndrome might need, you know what I mean? And uh, he didn't want, he basically didn't jive well with any professionals working with him. So eventually, he was going to work with me every day, and uh, and it became too much to run a business and run his care needs. And so I decided, I was like, dude, I'm just going to get trained as his medical care provider, and we'll take it from there. And at that point, we realized, like, you know, we had, we had some more free time on our hands. And so we decided to start traveling and stuff. And uh, that led into this, and that was two and a quarter, almost two and a quarter years ago. It was the beginning of February uh, two years ago, so not even quite two and a quarter, two, two years and a little over a month. So a couple of years ago, you became his prim primary care provider. Yeah, he's been with me all the time, but it's just he was getting medical care. Right. Like just to, so when I could work and stuff, but he's been he's been with me all the time. He's I mean, he's my son of twenty six years, so. Uh, but he needed like full time. Gotcha. You know, he needs everything done with him. Uh, so why not uh, live in a house? Why Why wouldn't well, you just do it and live in a house? And well, have your friends and your neighborhood and you know where to go to eat for a good sandwich. Uh, why leave? And I don't know. Go on the road? I think the yeah. town it happened in was uh, when we were in Sacramento, and the bottom line was, uh, and that's still our full time residence. You know what I mean? Uh, but. Um, there was no reason, like, we weren't from Sacramento. And so when I had to close the business down, there was nothing actually keeping us there anymore. Like, as far as, like, you know, I can't imagine sitting in an apartment all day. And he wouldn't be sitting in an apartment. We'd still have our friends and all that jazz. But um, we just, we got, we got to traveling down the coast. We did it, like, a couple of times. We'd go for a week. We'd go for two weeks. We'd go for three weeks. And we're like, man, we like being on the road better than we do anywhere else. And so when I was looking at buying an apartment, you know, or you know, renting an apartment, I was like, why are we going to do that? We could just literally, we, we ended up getting a 31 foot rig that was completely built out already. And it's just, we love being on the road, man. Like it's, there's nothing like it to us. Uh, 
Yeah, and we, we travel really without any aim or purpose, you know what I mean? Like, literally, we don't even plan a week in advance. Sometimes we'll plan a week in advance, but it's not very often. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, we go real slow, too. As we travel, it might take us... Um, it may take us... I mean, God, there was a time just to go from San Francisco to L.A., I think it took four months. And it typically will take us, let's say, from a place like Portland down to L.A. or something like that. I would never budget anything less than like six months time because we there's not a town or a beach or a mountain or a wash we don't just stop at. And if it jives with us, we stay for a while. If we meet cool people, we stay for a while. If it doesn't, we, we typically just pull up anchor and leave within a day or two. And again, just to the next spot that we know of, you know what right, I mean? Right, right. And some of the some of the magic is we don't even know. Like we'll just be like we'll be driving along and we'll see something on the side of the road and go, oh, what the fuck is that? And we'll pull over and we might spend two weeks there. Right. We came into Schooly Palooza. What well, we came into the party. We went to the RTR last year. I heard online about this RTR, and we didn't have any social media or anything, so we decided to head out to Quartzsite, Arizona last year. We went up to the RTR, and it was so split up that year, I guess. It was the first year it was really divided out because of some stuff with the BLMs. That, like, we couldn't... We'd never been to Quartzite. We couldn't find any real community building out there. Like, it was like... Well, we were just going to different washes and going, Hey, are you guys with the RTR? And they're like, kind of. <laughs> and so we're like, oh, this sucks. And uh, But then we heard grumblings of people going... Well, because I was like, well, where are people gathering? And they go, I don't know. No one's really gathering this year. It's all over the place. And uh, and they're like, the, the events are happening up at Parker um, Fairgrounds. But they're like, but you're not allowed to camp there. So, but we heard people going, I heard a bunch of people are, this part to our community is, is uh, gathering down in Skadden Wash, where the original one was. And they're like, oh, but they're just a bunch of partiers and musicians. And we're like, all right where <laughs> and so we went there blind we didn't know anybody there and we we went and we just looked for this skeleton on the side of a dirt road that you're supposed to hang a ride at and we, we went to that place and all of a sudden we found ourselves like we just camped and we we're like meeting people right and left and we met this this whole group of great people that we all named ourselves the chosen family and kelsey and shane and i mean there was there was a group of like Dang. 20 of us i think and we all made this chosen family. We all traveled basically for about four months after that. We all just kind of grouped up at this thing. People would come and go, you know, join, uh, branch right. off. But a, a core group of us traveled for like four months. We, you know, we all started traveling together after the RTR. We went straight to Schooly Palooza. And we, I hadn't even heard of Schooly Palooza before RTR. So we were just like, we decided to all go over Schooly Palooza, and we all went that. It was back to back, back that on that year, um, and that was amazing too. And then after that, we all just started traveling for like, like I was saying, like a better part of I think three or four months solid, until all this stuff, all the changes happened in the news, and you know, you know what happened. We were talking about states shutting down the borders, right. and so we we're like, you know, so there was different reasons. All of us had to scatter again for the most part. Some of us, some of them, we could stay together after that and kept traveling all the way up to the north. Um, but before before school clues and RTR, I'd never even heard no, of any, or I'd heard of it. But I thought the idea was fucking whack, dude. Like I literally, <laughs> I was like, why would you want a caravan? Because me and him just traveled solo. And we'd go into towns and meet people, and then we'd keep going. And I was like, man, I can't imagine why people would want a caravan and have to agree on where you're going and all this shit, right? It sounds I didn't, like a shit show. I didn't it? get like it, dude. Cats. Yeah, and I didn't get it. And then and then when I met this chosen family and we started doing it, I got it. Because it was really neat. We would travel from one place to the next. We would typically like all cook a family meal at night. Uh... It was just fun, and for every great idea I thought I had on the cool next place to go, four other people would chime in with a new idea, and we'd all just decide which was the best idea of the four. And I wouldn't have even, I would have never even known about some of the spots that we ended up hitting that were like my favorite, without like these group consciences of, and everybody chiming in ideas, and it just worked so cohesively. Uh, and now, this new f little tribe we built uh, just got done with like six weeks of building, man. Um, and traveling from Schooly Palooza, and we all came out here. That. And now we're all branching off into new directions, and we'll all meet up again someday. Um, and it's just neat. Now I look forward to. Okay. So, like, if you're if you're out there and you're new at this, and you haven't found these 
these kind of friends that you'll fall into in caravan with, it's neat, you know. And I'm also the guy that anytime I'm in the city, if I see a guy who looks like a full timer, I'm the dude who knocks on his door. It's like, oh hey, dude, I'm Nelson, and we get to talking. And the next place we're going to is an intentional community out in Arizona, east of Phoenix. Gonna die. And I met the co-founder of this intentional community at a Walmart parking lot where I was doing some shopping. And he had a bus, and so I went and knocked on him. And he thought I was another security guard telling him to move his ass along. And he came to the door like, oh, what? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm just a fellow nomad, dude. And he ended up following us out to Bombay Beach. And we had New Year's in Bombay Beach. Um, and now we're going to go visit him as a, at his intentional community out east of Phoenix. So it's going to be a month of hanging out there and yeah. doing another commune vibe. That sounds you know? amazing. Yeah, it's pretty neat stuff. We just keep our mind open, stay willing and go where the wind kind of takes us like just you know if somebody's watching this right now and they're listening to your story and they're thinking about they might want to start a similar traveling lifestyle what words of advice would you have for them oh i'd say you die. i would honestly say it's 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 easier than you think it's far less scary than you think it's scared i've never known a better life i've never known a happier life right. um Right. And it doesn't take much to do it. Just jump right. into it and do it. And as soon as you start meeting other nomadic people out there, there's probably no community I've ever met right. that's more helpful. In fact, at no. schoolie this year, when yeah. I got this bus, there was no plan to do a build. I just started talking to people at schoolie, and within five days, like 40 of us, all strangers and new friends, start following each other all the way out here and sticking together during this build. I, I can't think of another community that does that kind of stuff just on a whim. Um, so if like if it sounds lonely out there, it's only as lonely as you want to make it, dude. You can meet us. Okay. You can go out to like Craggy Wash or Quartzite, and if you're just honest, or well, if you're just open and willing to to put yourself out there, like there's people who are willing to like befriend you. It's amazing. It's and and we bond really fast and hard compared to like in a city. Too hard. It takes years to develop a real friendship with somebody. It takes at least yeah. six months maybe. Yeah. But dude, you know, out here it's like God in a month you can know somebody better than you probably knew somebody over a year at home. You know. It makes a lot of sense. You know, we've got all these lives that involve all these home. moving parts. When you live in a house or an apartment and you have a job, and then you've got the gym or whatever the things is, but that are in your social uh, calendar. And the other person has all those, yeah. but when you're camped together, right, you're together all the time. Totally. If you want to be, I mean, if you want to hold up in your bus for a few days or jet off someplace for a few days, that's fine too. Nobody cares. Which nobody cares. Everybody is really <laughs> accepting. If you're the kind who likes to park a quarter mile away and come in for one hour and then go, I got to get back to my solitude, everything's accepted. I can't, I mean, I really can't think of anything that's ever gotten anybody ousted except like some weird behavior due to like drugs or alcohol that they just had not in their grip at the time you know right. what i mean yeah but otherwise yeah. anything goes out here and nothing really gets judged a lot of acceptance yeah like really you know what i'm saying um yeah so if you're thinking about doing this and then you know the beauty is that you can always do it and if it doesn't work out for you man you always got some place to go back to and do it the way you did it before like i mean there's no such thing as oh, yeah. failing at this. It's just how long you want to try it for. Mm -hmm. But I found it's way easier than you might mm -hmm. think. I found it's uh, it's way more helpful. There's no I like literally no matter what happens wherever you are, you could have an engine failure, you get stuck in the sand, mm -hmm. and someone coming by is gonna be like, "Oh, ah, dude, I was in your shoes like three months ago." So they're gonna stop and help you. Right. I've never seen a dude really shit out of luck out here with no one helping him. Under any circumstance. Have you? No. No. Yeah, neither have I. Yeah. And I've also been the dude yeah. who, like, immediately runs over and helps dig a dude out. And, right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I've also been a dude who people show up, like, just strangers. They'll be like, they'll come by and see you struggling under your wheel and go, oh, here, here, let me help you out. And you're like, you know, it's pretty rad. Um, yeah, it's probably the tightest community I've ever seen of people, whether they know each other or not. You know, like... Last question. Yeah. Somebody's watching. They haven't uh, embarked on this type of a lifestyle. What What one thing, maybe it's a tool, maybe it's an electronic, uh, what's one thing that you maybe didn't think you needed out here 
but you have it and it's become just uh, indispensable, like what would you recommend? Oh, if you had this Wi-Fi router, that man, it's made a big difference in my life. What's your version of that? Okay, two anything. things. This is going to sound like cheesy, but people. Like if you come out here, meet people and say hi to people. Honestly, there's no tool... Uh, there's no tool more indispensable than my fellow friends out here and people. So I'd say willingness and to put your hand out because they're going to accept it. Is There's no tool that's more important than the people I meet out here. Mm -hmm. And they're not tools. I'm just saying. Nothing right. comes in. Nothing has been of more value. I don't care what view I have. Uh, views get real stale without good people around. And even the shittiest environment can be a blast with the right people around. And nothing makes you feel safer and more at home than the families you build out here. Okay, inanimate objects. Uh, my solar, dude. I did a year on the road without solar or anything, you know? Um, and we just roughed it, and it was rad. But, oh my god, solar is such a game changer. Good deal. Yeah, I mean, my solar is the most prized possession that I have, in my opinion. I can't think of anything it's else. It's pretty but... important to have power, isn't it? Yeah, dude, it's rad. Especially if you do a year without it. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Just like every time you drive, charging your computer and your cell phone, and then, right. you know, um, that's been the most important. But now, I, we got it pretty good. We have a fridge. We have a stove. We don't rough it at all. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, we're not really roughing like, it Like, dude, either. yeah, there's nothing roughing it about it. Um, but there are still people I know living in a van who have a lot tighter quarters and all that jazz. And they, they're, you know, they, they don't rough it. They have it exactly like they want it. And it's not right. rough. But me and this dude have a pretty, like, we got a comfortable scene, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though this is only halfway finished, the one before it was completely, it was a home. You know, there wasn't, we had a shower, we had everything, hot water, you name it. This is getting there too. It's going to be the same thing, but um, but, but yeah. You, but it has wheels on it. Yeah, you dude. I would. Want. I would hardly say in New York City, this is bigger than some apartments I've stayed in. So like, it's not small. It's not not a home. It's a full on home. So yeah, if anybody's watching this and thinking about doing it, I would say, I can't think of a single downside about doing this. Like not a single one, not one, uh, at all. So yeah, I'd say go for it, give it a shot. If it sucks, yeah, throw it away. Go back, go back home. And yeah, you go can back home. And, yeah. yeah, give it a year to feel real if you can. You know, but there's just yeah, there's nothing down. There's nothing, I don't have a I don't have a downside about this lifestyle choice, dude. Like not one. Not I mean that honestly. So it's not okay. like I don't have that uh, that young papa in the honeymoon stage of it. That right. It's just on the road for three months. Yeah. This is after two years, and there's been times we've been stuck in towns for like three weeks a month waiting on parts where mm. our rig can't move and we still just made the best of it and like we're like all right cool we're just gonna explore this town and it was cool man like so it's it's after being out here for a little while that like i still say yeah dude, i can't think of a single downside to it well thanks for taking time to visit with us and wanted you guys to meet nelson and his son and everybody the gang here in camp He's got a good uh, build going. Maybe at some point we can catch up with you when it's all finished and do another uh, uh, you know, so recap. Rad. That'd be so rad, yeah. Okay, hey guys, if you'd like to follow or chronicle us in our travels, follow us on Interview with the Trampire on Instagram. Interview with the Trampire. No underscores, nothing. <laughs>